right, so today I'm going to be talking to you about karyotypes. If you have not watched the chromosomal mutations video, you need to do that first and then come back and watch this video on how to interpret karyotypes. So I mentioned earlier in the uh, chromosomal mutations video lecture uh, that a karyotype is a picture of a person's chromosomes. So make sure that you write down that term karyotype and know that it's a picture of a person's chromosomes. And they are used to diagnose chromosome number disorders and chromosome structure disorders. Now, if you notice that on a karyotype, that the chromosomes are arranged in matching pairs according to like the banding patterns um, that we actually get a picture of these chromosomes. Well, karyotypes are made when we take a uh, set of cells from a person, we stain them using a dye that enables the chromosomes to be readily seen, and this stain produces a banding pattern. Now, the picture or the cells that we're really looking for are cells that are in metaphase, and we want the cells that are in metaphase because um, the chromosomes are lined up in the middle of the cell. Now, we're taking these from body cells, so the chromosomes aren't going to be paired. So we have to then figure out how those chromosomes should pair up. So when you're looking at a karyotype, remember that the picture is taken during metaphase, usually of my mitosis, when we can see the chromosomes lined up in the middle of the cell. Now again, those are, chromosomes aren't paired. So what you end up with is basically this chromosome smear. And when I was in high school, when we would do karyotyping activities, we would actually have to cut out each individual chromosome and then try to figure out which other chromosome would match up with it. Today we use computer software to match up the chromosomes based upon um, certain things, their length, their banding pattern, and the location of those centromeres, which I talked a little bit about when we discussed the chromosomal structure disorders. So if you notice on this picture, uh, the chromosomes are lined up into pairs um, and they kind of decrease in size. So chromosome one will have the longest chromosome, chromosome 22 will be one of the shorter pairs of chromosomes, and then the last set of chromosomes are what we call sex chromosomes, which we use to determine if a person is male or female. The rest of them, 1 through 22, are referred to as autosomes or body chromosomes that code for traits that are not associated with being male or female. So what can we learn from a karyotype? Well, karyotypes can tell us multiple things. One, they can tell us the sex of the individual. And when we say sex of an individual, that simply means uh, is the person male or is the person female from a genetic standpoint. Then we can also figure out the total number of chromosomes that the person has. And you need to make sure that you write down that 46 is the normal number of chromosomes for humans because you're going to have to analyze some uh, karyotypes later on and determine if the person has a chromosome number or, uh, disorder. And then that's the third thing we can figure out from there. We can diagnose number disorders and structure disorders. Now, for our purposes, we are only going to worry about diagnosing chromosome number disorders from karyotypes. We are not going to try to figure out if there's a structure disorder. So now let's take a look at how to analyze a karyotype. So the first step in analyzing a karyotype is to look at the very last set of chromosomes, and those are the sex chromosomes, and you want to figure out if the person is male or female. Now it's important to remember that males are going to have one X chromosome and one Y chromosome if they're normal. Now they could have an extra sex chromosome, but that would cause a disorder. Females will only have X chromosomes. Now a normal female will have two X chromosomes, a female uh, with a certain type of chromosome number disorder called Turner syndrome will only have one X chromosome. So here's a little saying that might help you remember. If there is a Y, it's a guy. No Y, no guy. So if there's a Y chromosome present, the person is a male. 
if there's no Y chromosome present, the person is a female. So remember, males have a Y, females only have X's. And um, you may have disorders that involve sex chromosomes uh, where the person is missing one or they have an extra one. The next thing that you want to do is to count the total number of chromosomes. Remember from the picture that you just saw, the chromosomes occur in pairs. A normal person is going to have two chromosomes at each numbered position, and they should have two sex chromosomes, meaning they have um, two X's or they have an X and a Y. The third step is to diagnose um, whether they have a chromosome number disorder or not. Now, we are not doing the chromosome structure disorders for our class. So all we're looking at is total number of chromosomes. So remember, if there's 46, that person does not have a chromosome number disorder. Now, that person may still have a structure disorder, or they may have a gene disorder caused by a frame shift or a point um, mutation, but those cannot be diagnosed from looking at a karyotype. Now, if a person has an extra chromosome, meaning they have 47 total chromosomes, we consider them having a trisomy. And oftentimes, trisomies are named after the, the scientist who discovered them or uh, after the first patient who presented those characteristics. Now, if a person is missing a chromosome, they would have 45 total, and that person has a monosomy. And remember, trisomy and monosomy were both um, defined for you earlier in the chromosomal mutations video. So now let's put this into practice and analyze a karyotype. So we're going to first analyze a karyotype together, and then you're going to practice some on your own. All right, so I've put some notes on here. You may want to write them down and always remember to start at the bottom of the karyotype to figure out if the person is male or female. So on each of the karyotypes, I will have circled where you're going to find the sex chromosomes, to, which determine if a person is male or female. Now this person has a chromosome over the X position and a chromosome over the Y position. So this person is considered to be male. If you count each chromosome, you can either do them uh, individually, so like one, two, three, four, five, six, or you can do um, count by twos because they're paired. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, 42, 44, 45, 46. So this person has a total of 46 chromosomes. So therefore, at least with regard to chromosome number, they are normal. So we would say that this karyotype is from a normal male of 46 chromosomes. Now this person could still have a gene disorder. We just can't diagnose it from here. Now, be careful if you decide to count by pairs because um, sometimes uh, there will be an extra chromosome or a missing chromosome. So just look at each set carefully as you do that. So now let's take a look at another karyotype. Now it's your turn to try this on your own. The first thing I want you to do is figure out if the person is male or female. So remember you look here at the last set of chromosomes to do that. Then I want you to count how many total chromosomes this person has. And then determine is this person normal, have a trisomy, or do they have a monosomy. Pause the video. See if you can figure it out on your own, and when you're ready to check your answer, uh, resume the video. Okay, so hopefully, now that you're finished with um, examining karyotype 2, you've come up with the same answer as me. So the first question was, is this person male or female? So I looked here at the circled set of chromosomes. This person has two chromosomes over the X position, nothing on the Y position, so this person is a female. Then I counted the chromosomes, I counted by two, and I ended up counting a total of 46 chromosomes, indicating that this person, at least with regard to chromosome number, is normal. So you should have said a female with 46 chromosomes who is normal. All right, now we're going to try it one more time. So here's our third karyotype. Figure out first, is this person male or female? Count your total number of chromosomes and figure out, is this person normal? have a trisomy, or have a monosomy disorder. Pause the video, figure it out, and then when you're ready to check your answer, resume the video. Okay, so hopefully you've figured out 
uh, karyotype 3, that this person is a male because there's a chromosome over the X position and there's a chromosome over the Y position. You should hopefully have noted that this person has 47 total chromosomes because, as I've indicated here with the arrow, at position 16, the person has an extra uh, chromosome, meaning that there are three chromosomes now at position 16. So remember, if you have one extra or three at one position, it's now called a trisomy. And this would be called trisomy 16. Now, sometimes the trisomy disorders will have a name. So, for example, if there would have been a third chromosome here at chromosome 21, we could have called that trisomy 21, or we could have called it Down syndrome. Uh, so, again, some of them will have specific names. Hopefully, you now have a better understanding of how to interpret a karyotype to figure out if a person has a chromosome number disorder. Uh, Please go to the online karyotyping activity and practice your karyotyping skills there. Uh, you'll have three different patients, meaning real people, um, and you have to figure out um, what type of disorder they have, if any. So go and work through that. Identify patient A, B, and C's chromosome number, uh, their sex, meaning if they're male or female, and if they have a disorder or not. And there's a little chart on there that you can use to figure out the name of the disorder that they have. Once you've completed your online practice activity, go to the chromosomal uh, mutations and karyotypes daily grade and complete it. You'll need to, the information from this PowerPoint and the chromosomal mutations PowerPoint to answer that.